Hey guys, welcome back to a brand new video, and in today's video we are going to be looking at the 2024 presidential election, and who I think uh, is, you know, right now in a hypothetical Biden versus Trump matchup 2.0, who I think would be favored in each and every state, as well as some congressional districts like in Maine and Nebraska, so we should get started, but I do want to say that I, this is not an original UEP idea. I think I did a video on this a while back, but I, I, this was not present in my mind until someone, rec until someone suggested it to me on Twitter. So for that reason, I am going to uh, give them credit for that. Uh, you know, most people on Twitter are more innovative than me, uh, but uh, thank you for saving me uh, from having to uh, uh, think of something that, that would have ended up being a bad video. So let's get started because I don't have too much time on my hands. Do the safe Biden states. Also, Christy Nome probably won't be Trump's running mate if he did get the nomination in 2024. It might be, you know, DeSantis or someone, but, uh, you know, I think just she'd be a decent pick for him, and I'm just trying to not make it too overpowered or too bad of a ticket. I know in the past I'd done Trump Gates because I because I really thought that he could have picked Gates before, but that's obviously not going to happen now. So uh, I think Biden would win uh, 200 electoral votes safe. Honestly, uh, I think Colorado and Virginia are definitely the most borderline, but I think Virginia, the fair, the Nova suburbs are are just too far gone for the GOP. So for that reason, I will keep it in uh the safety call you know it was a 10 point biden state in, in 2020 it was a five point clinton state 2016 you know if that continues it's a safe blue state in 2024 colorado was already a safe biden state in 2020 there's no reason to think it would revert back to being closer um so uh yeah and i think you know utah's debatably likely i'll just put it as safe for as for right now uh it you know but it would be like maybe a 13 or 14 point margin of victory for trump Montana, similar thing, but I think Montana would vote to the right of Utah in this election. Although John Tester on the ballot could potentially help Biden, but, you know, whatever. Um, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Louisiana, Missouri, Indiana, Kentucky, West Virginia, Ten uh, Tennessee, uh, not Mississippi. It, this kind of depends on if uh, on if uh, the, the new Voting Rights Act is passed by the Senate. It probably won't be, but if it did, it would help Democratic prospects in the South, especially in states like Mississippi. So... I think, uh, not, not South Carolina, so I think that is it for the safe Trump states, oh, and I don't know why I forgot Vermont, so then, uh, I'm blanking, uh, Vermont should have been safe, Biden, so that is a hundred and, or uh, just a hundred electoral votes uh, for Trump that would be safe, 200 for Joe Biden, we can now get into our likely states, uh, you, I don't think New Mexico needs much, much explanation, you know, this is a state that Biden carried by a likely March in 2020, I think he could, he probably make inroads with Hispanics, uh, and for that reason, I think he could do a little better in 2024 than 2020. Plus, Trump's gotten more unpopular since 2020, mostly due to the January 6th riots. So I think that would really not uh, not really help him anywhere, to be completely honest. I think he'd be weaker in 2024 than he was in 2020 in most cases. Uh, New Hampshire was another Biden state. that he, It was another likely Biden state. So I think for that reason... Um, he, he'd probably win it by similar margin, maybe a little more. New Hampshire is kind of a state that the white voters there are actually trying to the left, which is interesting. It's kind of not the trend we're seeing nationwide, but New Hampshire is a state, obviously very interesting politically. We should take a look at a lot in the future, especially with their critical Senate race coming up in 2022. Now, in the state of Maine, I think that their uh, large vote would be a 10, 11 point of Biden victory now. But I think that now that we've gotten those out of the way, it's more important than, oh, and I think Minnesota would be likely as well. I think it's more important that we move on to our, uh, like the Trump states, I think Alaska could actually be pretty close in 2024, and I don't say that as a meme. You know, there are a lot of people who have memed Alaska being a toss-up state. And, you know, to be fair, I know that Bidikoffer did have the state as a toss-up in 2020, but I think that when you actually look at what what the polls were saying, they had it as, you know, decently close. But I think that everyone knew that Trump was going to win Alaska by at least 9 or 10. And he, I think he won it by 10 or 11 or 10 and a half or something. So, you know, the polls weren't too bad. And I think that, you know, uh, the people who were predicting this state weren't too off the, you know, most of it as, as, as likely Republicans. So I think for that reason, Alaska should be, you know, I say with confidence that I can, you know, kind of get a grasp of where Alaska would lean politically by 2024. I think Trump would win it by seven or eight. Um, and then. Uh, he'd also probably carry Kansas by a likely Martian, but I think it would actually be single digits. And, you know, there was a lot of hype about Kansas's Senate race in the 2020 uh, elections. You know, Barbara Bollier, Chris, uh, or not Chris Kobach, uh, Ro Roger Marshall. I think that Bollier was destined to lose that race, and by, she lost it by like 11 points. She, she got beat pretty badly. So, you know, I think she's destined to lose that race, to be completely honest. But Democrats, you know, Kansas is still a state that's trying to the left politically. So I think that. 
generally speaking, Kansas should narrow up in 2020 or 2024, especially with Trump on the ballot. Who in Kansas is kind of a suburban state. They're, you know, the suburbs are taking a hard shift to the left, um, and I think that Donald Trump that, that that really would not play well for him in the state. A, a Mississippi, like a Mississippi and South Carolina, just the margins would just would not be there for Trump. You know, the way he got them in 2020, I just think Biden would improve with black voters, with with suburbanites, and possibly do better with rural whites. He, he probably would, but. Uh, that's not as for sure as I think his improvement with blacks and Hispanics could be. Um, so for that reason, uh, you know, the, the states would trend to the left, but I think they'd still be likely Republican. Uh, and then I think that uh, Iowa would be likely or as would Ohio. These were states that Trump would by likely margin in, 20, uh, in 2020. And I don't think that they're trending red necessarily. I, th- I think that Trump was Trump 2020 and 2016 was a good candidate for them. Now in 2024, if he did get the nomination, which in this scenario he does, um, you know, I don't think that his that he'd have the ability to appeal to these voters as much as he used to because of the capital riot. So for that reason, I'm going to put these both in the, in the likely Republican column, and I forgot Nebraska's second district for likely Biden. Uh, and I th- also think that Trump would carry Maine second by a likely margin. Um, you know, the country's too polarized for this t- to zoom too far to the left compared to 2020, but I think it would still narrow up again. Um, now going over to our lean Biden states. Uh, I think n- uh, Nevada as well as Arizona would be lean for Biden. I mean, this, the suburbs in Arizona are just too much for Trump to overcome at this point. I mean, I don't see him doing really uh, better anywhere in Arizona in 2024 if he did run. Uh, you know, H- Hispanics, as we all know, incumbents usually do better with Hispanics uh, than in their first time running. And I think that Biden would probably continue that the, the shift with the um, with the uh, suburban Republicans that we saw in 2020, I think that they w- wouldn't have softened up towards Trump. So I think Arizona leaned the same with Nevada. This was a lean Biden state in 2020, uh, and I think that it wouldn't uh, really zoom e- go either way. I think he'd improve on it in margins, mostly in Clark County because of the improvement with Hispanics and potentially working class voters. But other than that, I expect Nevada to say the same. Uh, and then we also have Wisconsin, Michigan, and this is going to get Biden to 270, Pennsylvania. I think uh, all these states should be considered a lean D in 2024, no matter what. Of course, you know, if, if we see, you know, a harris DeSantis mashup, it could be a different story. But, you know, all three of these states, the, the Democrats are kind of are losing ground in the rurals, losing ground with the white working class, but they're improving in the, in the suburbs, which is kind of their saving grace here. You know, Pennsylvania, Biden did not do very well with the working class. But he did well enough in the Philadelphia suburbs to hold the state. Same with Michigan and Wisconsin. Wisconsin to a lesser extent because, you know, Wisconsin, it was a very close, you know, we can, we can talk about Wisconsin for a very long time, but it was a very close win, Wisconsin. But, you know, as for Michigan and Pennsylvania, I think the suburbs would just be too bad for Trump that he couldn't overcome, even, even with a stellar performance with white working class voters, which, you know, we can't even guarantee that at this point because of, you know, how unpopular he's gotten over the past couple of months. Now, in Wisconsin, I think that it it would vote significantly to the right of these two states, you know, two or three points to the right of these states. I think that Wisconsin is a state that the Democratic Party has to, you know, I think that they should focus, you know, they have a Senate race there in 2022. They have a Senate race there in 2024. But I think after, you know, after that, they should, by 2028, I think that at the presidential level, at least, they should abandon the state of Wisconsin and really try to move on. Because Wisconsin, the Democrats have kind of, peak there in and i mean this in because they are just so they are the, their victories there have been very very slim because they have the right coalition of uh you know urban voters as well as working class voters and you know i wouldn't say that the working class in this region is trending to the right but democrats have been losing ground there because of trump now if he ran in 2024 it's going to be hard to say on one hand he's still a good current candidate for the republican party for the working class but on the other hand his support has you know it's gotten worse since january 6th so i think it would stay blue but it's still a problem for democrats in the future now for the lean republican states i think florida well actually no not florida uh not florida but i think texas would be a three-point trump state biden would definitely improve in the rio grande valley and i think he would continue to have the suburbs swing to the left but it still wouldn't be enough for him to win the state uh now for our tilt biden states i think georgia would still be tilt it would be you know maybe a two-point margin it, it would be right on the cusp of lean but i think for that reason um Georgia would be a tilt Biden state, uh, or no, not for that reason. I don't know why I said that. I didn't give any reasons, but I think that it, this is a state that could be lean, could very well be lean. I I, I almost put it in lean, but I think it will just be tilt uh, because I don't see Trump 
uh, doing too poorly in the Atlanta area compared to his 2020 performance. He could lose ground, but I don't think he'd lose enough to make it, you know, kind of a blowout loss in the state. And then in North Carolina, I think Biden would also win that by a tilt margin uh, just because the suburbs went to the left. Now, the, now the black population in North Carolina hasn't, uh, is kind of, it's increased, but not at the rate the Democrats would like, I guess you could say, because uh, generally speaking, black voters are Democrats. You know, nine out of every 10 black voters are registered Democrats. Uh, and they are the most democratic voting bloc in the country. So I think that for that reason, North Carolina, uh, you know, the combination of the suburbs swing to the left and the black vote would give Biden a win North Carolina in 2024. Uh, and now we're going to just move on to Florida. And I'm really torn on Florida. I, I was originally have it as tilt R, but, you know, when I'm saying this, I'll be bold here. I'll be really bold here. And I'll see Florida goes to Joe Biden in the 2024 presidential election by under 1%. And I think that Miami-Dade, people are extrapolating the Miami-Dade swing in that they're, they're thinking that it's going to translate into future elections. I don't think it will. I think the Democrats do. Over, first of all, the Florida Democratic Party is terrible. They need to actually start winning elections. They are so bad. They are terrible at winning. They're like the Minnesota Republican Party or the Arizona Republican Party. They're just terrible at winning elections. They don't know how to win elections. But, you know, I think with the new leadership of that party, you know, it, it could be uh, better for Florida Democrats than most people think. So I think Florida uh, right now, you know, it, it's, it's still a leading Republican state, but I think with Trump, uh, unless he gets the insane performance he had with Hispanics in the South that like he did in 2020 again, which I don't think he will, mostly because Biden would be the incumbent, because Trump's really gotten less popular over the past few months. I think that for that reason, Florida would uh, be a narrow Biden state, plus the suburbs in, you know, Pinellas County, Duval County. These are counties that are trending to the left that I don't think that Donald Trump can overcome. So... That's it for this video, guys. I know that these were some bold predictions. I also did not script this video, or, and I'm also going to rush. So, you know, if I talk a little fast, my bad. Um, but if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I hope you have a great rest of your day. Goodbye.